not dancing today. Really, I'm not. My two videos of dancing caused my arthritis to flare up. But do not fear, my friends. The dancing dame will return. Does anyone know where I can get a cuter cane? friends. I took a few days off to reflect on how I can make my channel the most helpful to you guys and to the whole community. I came up with some ideas. I'm starting a Mental Health Mondays where I excavate tips on how to improve our mental health during this trying time. Um, all books have tips, believe it or not, where you can glean some knowledge on how to feel better and I hope to very excited about this by the way I hope to make this really fun on Wednesdays I'm going to do classics where I read books or reread them that I haven't seen too much on YouTube in general and um, uh, for example I like D.H. Lawrence and I haven't seen too many of reviews of him and on Fridays, there's dancing. Just kidding. Fridays, I'll do everything else bookish, including tags, reviews, hauls, wrap-ups, the whole booktube thing. Today is my book haul, part two. And some of these books I've read and some I haven't, but I hope you'll enjoy it. So let's get started. The first book I have today is The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith. And this is a classic sapphic romance set in like 1950s, which is really cool. And uh, Patricia Highsmith is also the author of The Talented Mr. Ripley and Strangers on a Train. So she's very prolific in thrillers, but this was her first love story and um, the fact they made a movie out of it and I don't really like this cover because it's the movie cover I'm hoping to find uh, a non movie cover they called the movie Carol which is one of the uh, characters in the book and um, I really really love this book but I'll do more on my wrap-up what I just want to say now is that it's about two women of course and one, and they meet in a department store. By the way, this is taking fr taken from Patricia Highsmith's real life story. It really happened to her. She worked in Bloomingdale's, I read. And this has taken place in a department store. And she meets this woman, an older divorcee, and she falls in love immediately, or lust, whatever. And uh, they go on a trip a road trip together and they both change the girl the young girl Therese she's very naive and uh, she's smitten with this Carol and uh, she does everything she can to get her and um, it's it's very very lovely the word the, the, the words are lovely and the prose is lovely I meant to say and um, the road trip is a very interesting concept in this type of book and this is way before its time and I really am going to do a bigger wrap up about it but anyway I think that you'll enjoy it. My next book is The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Ackerman and it was written in 2007. One of my compulsions, my reading compulsions is World War II um, history and specifically the Holocaust um, one reviewer wrote that it's a grotesque oxymoron to say you like books about the Holocaust 
but that this story is alternatively funny, moving, and terrifying. My grandparents from my mother's side were Polish and Jews. And in fact, I lost two family members, two great aunts during the Holocaust. And my mother, this is on my mother's side, my father was Puerto Rican, which probably they met at a dance, which is probably why I like dancing. But anyway, um, what I really like about this novel is it's about animals, it's about people, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But anyway, um, going back to what I was saying about the Holocaust, I was forbade, forbidden, to read books about the Holocaust growing up because my mother felt that it was too traumatizing for me. So of course, being young, I had to do my own thing, but it was accidental. I found a book in a friend's house who was uh, a friend, Patty, and she was German and Irish, but she had this book, not this book, and this was in the 50s, but it was a book called The Doll's House, which was sort of a memoir about the author's sister. And it was dark, very dark. It's very hard to get a hold of right now. But um, I'll talk about that in other book, in other videos. But back to the zookeeper's wife. Um, I'm really excited, like I said, to read it. Um, I think that reading about the Holocaust should be required reading for everyone because the numbers of the survivors are dwindling. So it's important for us to remember, to never forget. So I'm so excited about reading this book because I thought I read every book that came out about the Holocaust and I'm gonna be reviewing some of them after this book. But I can't wait to get my hands on this. Okay. My next book is Mr. Panubra's 24-Hour Bookstore, a novel by Robin Sloan, around 2008, I think. And uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. And the cover, I don't know if you can see the cover, but it won a lot of awards. And it shows, it depicts like books uh, piled up in different directions, and it's very arty. Um, I don't know too much about this book, but from what I know, uh, a college graduate lost his job. He was a web designer and he looks for a job and he walks into the 24-hour bookstore. That's the name, Mr. Panubra's 24-hour bookstore. And he gets a job working night shift. And he notices a lot of strange things are happening. And uh, for one thing, he's not allowed to go into a certain section and read a certain kind of books. And um, I heard that it's a very uh, interesting human interest story, as well as um, talking about bookstores, which I love any kind of books about bookstores. And he al it also talks about how technology and books, e you know, contrast against each other and complement each other. So I'm, v I'm looking forward to reading this book. My next book is Life Drawing for Beginners. And I bought this book, uh, paid money for this book, because it, it's very different from what I'm usually, that I usually read. It's a contemporary kind of romance. And um, it's about this lady, and she's an artist, and her name is Audrey Matthews. And she offers an evening class in life drawing She's looking for some extra pocket money and something to fill her Tuesday nights. So she hires a model, and the model is a very reluctant model because she has to be nude. <laughs> and anyway, she recruits five students, each of which have their own reason of being there. And we find out a lot about that during the, the course of the book. It's a slow book, and it has a very old-fashioned feel to it. It's sort of a 1950s feel. And um, I like it. I really liked it. It's, uh, it was enjoyable. I can't say it's my favorite book, but I'll do a more in-depth in -depth re uh, review of it in my wrap-up.
My last book is Real World by Natsuo Carino. And this is a very dark book about four teenage girls. And they're wading their way through a hot, muggy, Tokyo suburb type of situation. And one of them discovers that, well, one of their neighbors has been murdered. And um, one of the girls thinks that she knows who did it. And he's the, uh, well, I won't tell you who he is. <laughs> I don't want any spoilers. But um, this is a very real, dark look into Jap a Japanese part of life that is not really known, teenage life, which is very different that's portrayed when you go there. I was a teacher in Japan, and um, even I didn't know a lot of things when I read this book. And it's very psychologically complex and astute and dark. And um, I'll have more of it on a wrap up, but I think you should read it. It's re it really is interesting in a, in a very different way than most. I'm not sure if this is YA or not, but from most books that I've read, about teenagers, this is quite different. But then I, I'm not that much into YA, so you tell me how you find it. Okay, so that's the end of my book haul, but I wanted to end with some positivity with a quote that I made up myself. And here it goes. Magic surrounds us, so does negativity embrace the magic. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell. For now, aloha. <laughs>